on it to make sure. Okay, got that. So making sure everybody understands that the meeting is being recorded. Uh, and next, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Carlos, um, who's going to walk us through some interpretation uh, and housekeeping instructions. So, Carlos. Yes. Saludos, everyone. Carlos Velasquez, part of the city's recovery task force team. Uh, so some housekeeping notes uh, that we share every meeting. Uh, this meeting will include interpretation in Spanish and Vietnamese. And gracias and welcome again to our, our veteran interpreters for today, Armando, Vincent, Tiffany, and Priscilla. Uh, to access the interpretation in Spanish and Vietnamese, click on the interpretation button on your Zoom screen and then select the appropriate language. Uh, in addition, for uh, the interpretation for all of you is set to off. So we recommend that you all click on, so I guess we recommend you all click on the interpretation button um go to the english channel so you can make sure that you hear all the interpretations in english uh, we do have two videos uh one in spanish and one in vietnamese that will play right now hola y bienvenidos a esta reunión para acceder a la función de interpretación haga clic en el icono del globo en la parte inferior de la ventana de zoom y selecciona el idioma que desea Para escuchar claramente el audio de interpretación, le recomendamos que también seleccione la opción para silenciar el audio original, que es la opción más baja en el menú después de hacer clic en el icono del globo. Xin chào và cảm ơn quý vị đã tham dự buổi họp ngày hôm nay. Để truy cập vào phần thông dịch của ứng dụng Zoom, xin nhấn vào biểu tượng hình quả địa cầu ở phía dưới của màn hình và chọn ngôn ngữ theo ý muốn của quý vị. Để nghe rõ lời phiên dịch, chúng tôi khuyến khích quý vị chọn chức năng tắt âm thanh góc nằm ở phía cuối trong phần tùy chọn của biểu tượng quả địa cầu. Uh, task Force Members we ask all of you to rename yourselves on Zoom by first and last name, uh, and also add your organization name if you haven't, uh, so we can ensure that you're identified as a task force member. Uh, all you have to do is click on the little top three buttons on the top right of your image, um, click on rename, and you can go ahead and do so. Uh, the meeting is, this meeting is open to the public. Saludos to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you'll be able to see and hear tonight's meeting and you will have the opportunity for two minutes time to share your voice and comments uh, during the com public comment portion of the period, uh, public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, this is gonna happen towards the end of the agenda. And until then, we appreciate your patience uh, during the rest of the meeting. Uh, and, I, and as always for task force members, there, uh, there will be time after uh, each of the sections to, for questions. And we ask that if you have a question to use the raise your hand feature found below on your Zoom account, uh, and we'll be the one announced, Rosalind or myself will be the one announcing your name so you can unmute yourself. Uh, I believe that's it. Thanks, Rosalind. Great, thank you so much, Carlos. And one other reminder is that when you um, are speaking, if you could just um, say your name and the name of your organization to make sure everyone knows who you are. We've been asked to make sure we do that. Um, so uh, we like to start our meetings uh, first acknowledging that we are on ancestral lands of the Ohlone people, and we pay respect to their elders past and present. And we give thanks to their sacrifice and examples of humility, stewardship and resilience. And so with that, we are going to quickly review our agenda for this evening. Next slide. Great. Um, so we're going to start off with some updates to the task force. We have a couple of items just to share with you to keep you informed of what's going on uh, in the city as it relates to recovery work. Um, and then the main item for our agenda this evening is um, a presentation on the community engagement plan, uh, and we'll have ample time for discussion, really want to get the, the input and feedback from task force members um, on that engagement plan. 
Um, and then as Carlos mentioned, we'll end with public comment, uh, talk about next steps. Next slide. So in terms of updates, next slide. Great, thanks. Um, so the first item um, we wanted to share with you is that we're so excited that the steering committee held its first meeting um, on March 30th, and we really had a, a great meeting. This was the first time for, for all of the committee chairs uh, to gather. Um, the committee discussed and agreed on roles and responsibilities, and they reviewed and approved um, the agenda for our meeting this evening. Um, the committee also decided uh, on a meeting schedule, and so they're going to be meeting two weeks before each task force meeting. Um, and so the next meeting of the steering committee will be Wednesday, April 27th at 12.30 p.m. Um, and this meeting is a, a public meeting. So we, we welcome all of the task force members and, and members of the public to uh, participate um, as well. Um, and also the steering committee members um, provided updates on the work of each committee. Uh, and that information was shared with you in an email uh, that was sent out yesterday to all of the task force members. Um, and that um, document is also available on the recovery task force webpage as well. So in terms of city council updates, we, uh, we have quite a few. And actually the first one I wanna share, it's not listed on the slide, but it's something that's really important, uh, really super exciting news. And I know important to this task force. So on March 15th, uh, the city council approved the mayor's March budget message. Um, and that message includes um, six different priorities for the city. Uh, one of which is an equitable recovery. And uh, the memo specifically acknowledged that some or all of the recommendations that the recovery task force uh, will be developing will obviously require some funding to actually implement. And so the city council, um, their approval included direction to the city manager uh, to create a modest reserve of one-time funding to implement those recommendations that the council will adopt this fall when the task force transmits its final report and recommendations. And so as the budget process um, continues, and it'll continue through this month and into May, uh, we will have a better idea of actually how much of that one-time funding is going to be available to the task force uh, to implement those recommendations. Uh, and we'll be keeping you updated um, on that process. Um, so we're ex super excited to share that news with you. Um, also, um, city staff um, provided status reports to the Community and Economic Development Committee uh, on March 28th. Um, on two recovery initiatives. One is small business recovery and the other is re-employment and workforce development. Um, lots of great information shared in those two status updates and we're happy to share both the memoranda and the PowerPoint presentations um, from staff's presentation. Um, and then finally, coming up uh, on April 25th, uh, city staff will be providing uh, an update on your work, on the recovery task force work. Um, uh, in terms of um, the milestones that we made, we'll be sharing a, a lot of information about the committees that have been formed, um, talking about the framework for recommendations that uh, we're proposing, ideas obviously around gathering data, um, as well as community engagement. Um, and with that, I will actually turn it over to see if any task force members have any announcements that they would like to share with the group. We didn't get any um, submitted to us, but if anyone has anything to share or announce, just uh, raise your hand.
Okay, I'm not seeing. Oh, I see Christine. Have you have your hand raised, Christine? Hello, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> we are very proud to be able to say that we're working with the city to form a disability affairs office. And we invite everybody to come virtually. And I'll send the information to um, um, our wonderful administrators to, to forward out to everybody. To a meeting on the uh, 20th, and I believe 1 p.m. to um, talk about the um, what an Office of Disability Affairs is and what it should do, uh, because right now it's very um, amorphous. We, you know, we, we don't have a, you know, an actual idea of what it's going to look like finally, but the idea is to, to get one up and running. So I just wanted to make that announcement. Great. Thank you for sharing that information, Christine. Yeah. Uh, if there is more information or anything in writing you want to get out to the task force members, feel free to email us and we'll we'll get that out to everyone. Thank you. Oh, Quincy. Okay. I just got a flyer, so I'll get it to you Great. guys. Terrific. Thank you. Quincy, I see you have your hand up. Good to see you. I do. Good to see you all. Thank you. Uh, Quincy Phillips, Q, Executive Director for Lighthouse Building Back Better, also part of uh, Bridge to Recovery, Equity Forward, and uh, Regional Recovery Coordination. Good to see you all. A uh, really quick announcement. On Monday, April 18th, we are actually convening the region around a guaranteed basic income in partnership with Santa Clara County, as well as Destination Home and the state. We have some, some new speakers announced. The state of California will actually be presenting on their soon to be released uh, RFA request for application around uh, the $35 million um, state RFA. And we will also have uh, Professor Gary Painter from USC, uh, Sol uh, Price. Sorry if I got that. I know they're changing their names or a name recently has changed, but uh, one of the key speakers um, and thought leaders around this issue, and they'll be presenting as well. Uh, and then we'll have a few other people presenting around public wait, the public waiver, public assistance waivers from the county as well, which is a key part of the process. So if you're interested, please reach out. Um, it's, it's from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. On Monday, April 18th, I'll make sure to get the flyer over to you, uh, Rosalind and, and Carlos and Aurelia. Thank you all for giving us this opportunity to provide this update. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Quincy, for sharing. Okay, I don't see any other hands. Okay, so one other quick uh, piece of information to share with you all that I'm hoping everyone's gonna be super excited about. So uh, earlier this week, the city administration issued an information memo um, regarding the city's approach to resuming in-person meetings. Um, I'm really happy about that. I, I think many of us are. We, we know that there have been lots of benefits to um, gathering on Zoom. A lot of more people have been able to participate, but still we know that others um, actually prefer to meet in person. So our city council, as you know, they have been conducting hybrid meetings and that will continue. Uh, the city is in the process, however, of upgrading the audio and video technology in the city council chambers and in the council committee wing room. So that work is underway and it's going to take some time, at least through the end of the calendar year. Um, so with that, um, it's been decided that all city commissions, uh, boards, and any Brown Act body like the Recovery Task Force, um, starting in July, July 1, meetings will be conducted in person. Um, so it's great news. Um, it, it means that we're going to have to kind of pivot again uh, and make sure that we have a really good meeting location and our team is working on that. We know this impacts um, the committees. So the committee meetings will also will have to be conducted um, in person. Um, and until 
the technology upgrades have been completed, uh, we will not be able to have hybrid. So these will be in person only. And I know that's that's problematic for some, um, but we we really have to get the technology in place before we're actually able to conduct hybrid meetings for all of the boards and all the commission and task force. So um, stay tuned for more information. Just wanted to give you the heads up um, that we'll be going uh, in person in July. Um, and so then the last item that we like to share is actually um, a video that was created by uh, city staff. And this was a tribute to our community, um, to city employees and to partners. Um, many of whom you all are here tonight, we relied on really all of you in terms of responding uh, to the pandemic. Um, so this video was created in partnership with our Department of Parks, um, Recreation and Neighborhood Services. Uh, and really the idea was to capture um, the struggles and challenges and the sacrifices made by so many um, of you during this time. And so with that, we just want to say thank you. Um, we know that you've been working hard, you've been stretched to the end, and you continue uh, to partner with the city and you continue to help our residents. And we just can't say thank you um, enough. So with that, this, this video is short. I think it's probably only about a minute, but we thought it would be great to share it with you. It's been two years since the pandemic started and many of us have endured great challenges. We have shown resilience, strength, and courage to get through these times together. We love our community and our priority continues to be providing impactful services to residents and businesses. Many continue to provide civic services to the community while others pivoted to work on the front lines to bring resources and services to the most affected communities in San Jose. From giving food daily and serving more than 228 million meals, to helping those in great need of housing and those facing eviction, to providing electronic devices and digital access to adults and kids, we are committed to our city and its well being. We still have a lot of work to do. We've been challenged, we've learned, and we've triumphed, all while leaning on each other for support. We are strong because we stand together as one team to make a better San Jose for everyone. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. We are San Jose. So thank you, we are San Jose and we're all proud to be members um, of this wonderful community. So again, thank you really from, um, you know, I'll say on behalf of our mayor and city council and certainly on behalf um, of our city manager, Jennifer McGuire. Okay, so the main item um, for our agenda this evening uh, is regarding our community engagement plan. And I'm now gonna turn it over back over to Carlos and he is going to introduce um, our fabulous chair of the community engagement committee, our Sally Gonzalez. Hello everyone. Um, I'm happy to be partnering with Araceli, uh, one of your fellow task force members and the chair of the community engagement committee to share an overview of the community engagement plan that will serve as a guiding document for the community engagement that the task force conducts this summer. Uh, city staff and our consultant partner, Winter Consulting, are gonna be coordinating this community engagement alongside the task force, uh, largely through the community engagement committee. Uh, the strategies that we're gonna be sharing today are, have essentially been co-created by you. Uh, the plan has uh, been informed by your input from past task force meetings, conversations with the community engagement committee, uh, city staff, and our consultants as well. Uh, the plan that we're going to be sharing is still a draft, 
and tonight's meeting is an opportunity uh, for you all to share your input uh, with a goal to provide a final version that's going to be approved by you at the May 12th task force meeting. Um, so you can raise your hand if you have an urgent question, but we have time after the presentation to answer all your questions or for you to provide input. Um, so next slide. So uh, just a quick step back, uh, I want, we wanted to share how this plan aligns with the overall community engagement goals of the task force. Um, so this plan supports our desire to reach for the task force to reach the, those who have been most impacted by the pandemic and to build trust among those residents and communities. Uh, the task force is another opportunity to inform residents about existing recovery initiatives so that's work that we hope that is happening now uh, as you all do, uh, as you all receive more information about the current programs and services that the city and our partners provide. Uh, we wanna gather input on what is working and where there are gaps, uh, what's missing from the current work that's happening. Uh, again, this is work that we hope is already happening now through our task force meetings and committees. Um, so this engagement plan will offer more opportunities for the communities uh, most impacted by the pandemic to also provide their input. And so the, again, really ultimately the feedback that we receive from you and from those community residents who we connect through through, this, through the strategies in this plan will be incorporated into the final report we submit to city council. Um, I, I do see that there's the promotores model and on this slide here. So employing the promotores model is also a key goal that we have for task force in regards to community engagement. Uh, as has been mentioned before, the city council did allocate funds for the city and task force to use this model as part of our community engagement. Uh, we will be providing updates on this soon as we're currently developing a description and scope of work, as well as developing the criteria for the organizations that we're gonna wanna provide grants to to do this work. Um, so next slide, please. So for the strategies of this engagement plan to be effective, it's important that we gather community voices in an authentic way that reflects the diversity and cultural sensitivity needed for a high quality engagement process. So the strategies, events, and activities in this plan will follow the engagement principles that you see here. So we want to listen deeply. Uh, we want to start and end with listening. We want to defining the problems, solutions, and final recommendations. They're all going to flow through our community. We want to recognize and build from residential expertise. Uh, we want to approach communities where they are and recognize that power already exists within the community. We don't want to be extractive. We want to avoid one-time engagements and create sustainable relationships with the community. Uh, we wanna be able to provide resources. Uh, members of the community should receive incentives for actively participating in our enga engagement uh, efforts, particularly those residents with limited resources. We wanna make space uh, so that, that we wanna create engagement opportunities in this plan where all members of the community can feel safe and comfortable. So that could mean either providing childcare, mental health services um, at our events. We want to offer events at various times of the day and the week. Uh, we want to provide in-person and virtual options, uh, engagement opportunities for a variety of abilities and for people with various access to technology. We want to meet people where they're at. And uh, you know, we're thinking long-term uh, with these principles, uh, but in terms of this plan. Uh, although the engagement uh, is currently scoped to occur within the summer of 2022, uh, the results of this process will inform uh, future programming and require future, engage uh, for future engagement. We want to build long lasting relationships. Next slide. And also excuse the cooking. My, my wife is, is cooking dinner for us right now. Um, so, so here are the community engagement strategies and tactics of the plan. Uh, this, is, this is how we will be connecting with the community to gather the input that you need to support your recommendations. 
So community survey and recovery report and survey consolidation. So after gathering from the task force committees, what information and input uh, you wish to receive from residents, we're going to be developing a community survey. So there will be a standardized, uh, there will be standardized questions, but we can also add customized questions depending on the community. Uh, for example, we can add additional questions to a survey uh, that's meant for small business owners. Uh, and we do want to have offer incentives uh, for those who, be able, who are able to complete the surveys. Uh, we also want to acknowledge that and leverage the work that other organizations, including those among you in the task force, have put into existing surveys uh, and, uh, and data gathering. And so we will be gathering this existing work to add to and support our survey results. Another key tactic is a story, storytelling project that we will launch. Uh, for myself, as someone who loves theater, especially community-based theater, I know that stories can be powerful tools. Uh, so incorporating storytelling it, into our outreach was one of the recommendations by the task force, and it's why you see it here in this plan. Uh, so through quotes and photos from individuals, we hope to paint a more vivid picture of the reality of COVID-19's impact and add a qualitative element to the input that we're, we're going to be receiving. An engagement toolkit is another part of the community engagement plan. Uh, we want to provide all task force members with a toolkit to help you distribute the survey and storytelling project through your own existing events and outreach channels. Uh, the toolkit will also offer information on how to host a pop-up, uh, house meeting, focus group, or community forum. Uh, while there is no expectation for task force members to conduct these events, we want to make it simple for you to do so. Uh, I did also want to share that we hope to have a large public event in late May or early June to kick off our community engagement. Uh, we can also plug into existing large scale public events. Um, so after our presentation, we are eager to hear from you your thoughts about what is what this kickoff could look like, or if you have or know about an existing event that we can tap into either for this event or for our outreach this summer, we'd love to hear. Thank you, Carlos. Um, next, we'll be talking about our lived experience. Um, if you could um, go back to the last slide. Yeah, please. <laughs> In regards to our lived experience group, we will have a group of 10 community residents and, and stakeholders with lived experience relevant to the impact of COVID-19, who will work together with, the, with our group and also um, with the different community engagement activities and events. This group are trusted ambassadors on the ground, gathering key insights from their neighborhoods, particularly those neighborhoods who we have heard from all of you in regards to, you know, where they're being represented by the task force. We are hoping that each member will plan and carry out three community activities, events throughout the summer of 2022. With the support of the city staff and the council consulting team as needed. Also, in regards to the marketing material, we'll be developing and engaging activities. We'll share broadly with the group here, with community centers, um, transit hubs, grocery stores, places of worship, 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 and also we're going to be taking input in regards to the task force. Where else will we will we need to be sharing this information? Next slide, please. Please take a minute to review the selected criteria above. As you can see, the criteria for the lived experience group, this is how we have defined the people that with lived experience, thanks to the input that we have already received from the community engagement committee, the steering committee, staff members, and our consultants. We've been able to conduct one-on-one -on -one conversations in prior meetings. The lived experience group, as you can see, can have possibly many, more than one selected criteria. And that's what we're gonna be looking for. We're gonna be looking for groups that not only one or two, um, but just a diversity of groups that could meet maybe several of these um, lived experiences. 
Next slide, please. The individuals in this lived experience group will be recommended by the organizations shown here, whose audience-based and communities are those of that to fit the criteria in the lived experience. After connecting with these organizations, introducing them to the lived experience work group, we'll, pro we'll provide them with an online form, as Carlos has mentioned, for them to share for two people who they think that would be a good candidate for the lived experience group for us to gather some information. The organizations were, again, informed by one-on-one -on -one conversations with the Community Engagement Committee, Steering Committee, City staff, and our consultants. And I, I did want to also add that full transparency, as you can see, the, the list does include member organizations of our task force, and we'll offer our the opportunity in just a bit uh, for uh, for the task force to provide additional uh, organizations uh, that we can reach out to for recommend for uh, to to get information about possible candidates. Next slide, please. The selection process is currently underway, as Carlos had mentioned in previous slides, and we have already begun the outreach to the organizations just mentioned in the previous screen. Tonight's meeting will be an, an opportunity for the task force members to provide additional input on the criteria and the CBOs. Sorry. <laughs> Our consultants will continue to outreach and additional organ, to additional organizations with city staff providing the application form to the candidates. As you can see, we've set a deadline to receive the forms by April 21st. So that's in a week. Um, our consultants teams will review and identify the final list of lived experience group members. This list will be adopted by the steering committee at our second meeting on April 27th and we will share with the rest of the task force after. Next slide, please. And so just to summarize some of the, tem the timeline that we have for community engagement, um, we're, we're hoping to receive from the committees uh, by the end of this month, um, the information or input that you wanna receive from residents um, in these community events or, and also in the survey, so we can start working to develop that in the surveys. Um, April 27th, the steering committee will be adopting the lived experience group, um, and then we'll be finalizing the, the community engagement plan and sharing that with you so it could be approved uh, formally at the uh, May 12th task, task force meeting. I think it says May 14th on the, on the slide, so apologies. But May 12th is when we hope to uh, share a final draft of this community engagement plan um, for, you to, for you to review and, uh, and approve. Uh, and then in June and August, that's when we're going to be uh, launching our community engagement activities. And again, uh, this kickoff event that we want to have uh, in late May or early June. Um, and so when, and in September is when we'll be able to uh, get finalize and analyze the community input that we've received at these committee, uh, these committee events to share with the committees. Next slide. So what we're asking from you, what aspects of the proposal committee engagement plan resonate with you? Also, input on criteria for lived experience group and the CBOs. Yeah, you, you know, we've, we've all, as, I, as Araceli mentioned, our, this, um, this reaching out to, uh, to pass possible candidates for the lived experience group is ongoing. And we already have received a good number of submissions. So, um, if um, if you do have, you know, a, a a recommendation for someone that you think truly needs to be on this on this lived experience group, uh, you can send that to us. Um, send us their contact information via the email there before Tuesday of next week. Uh, but as I mentioned, we already have a good number of people who have submitted. Uh, their interest to be part of the lived experience group. And we'd like to be, with only 10 slots, we'd like to give as many of them as possible the opportunity to be part of this group. So um, 
And so, yeah, as part of this discussion, the, the input that we'd like to have right now is, um, you know, are, are you interested in hosting or producing an activity or an event? And then also, again, ideas for a, a community a, event that we can that we can use to launch uh, this uh, uh, this community outreach that we'll be doing. So, um, so open to questions and 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 input on on these on these prompts. Thank you. Go ahead, Brandon. Right on. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Carlos. Um, I was just trying to you know, this, uh, scan through there quickly on that listing of all the, the various organizations. And it kind of it, it uh, moved before I could really uh, see in total. So I didn't know, was there any culture organizations that were part of that list at this time? Uh, Aurelia, do you want to maybe slide back to that slide? And then this is Carrie. It looks like it's culturally specific organizations, um, but I don't see any arts organizations here, if that's what your question was. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking it's more related to that. There's uh, it's about culture workers. I didn't know if any of these groups maybe was able to kind of carry that forward. So not seeing any, I've just offered that up for consideration that, you know, somebody that could uh, be a conduit for that part of our community. Great idea. Thank you so much, Brendan. So, um, and I know that you have specific organizations in mind. So um, please feel free to, to email um, us and we'll get in touch with them right away. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. Uh, Buckley, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. This is um, Buckley Bloom from First Five Santa Clara County. And I was also, I'm glad we're back at this list because I was trying to scan it as well. And I think that a big group that's missing from this list, which obviously some of these groups would be a part of these different orgs, but specifically child care workers, thinking about family child care home providers, family friend and neighbors, um, center based folks, you know, alternative studies, the whole gamut. I feel like those folks have would really, um, their voices heard in this recovery process would be awesome. And I think first five, we, we convene a lot of those groups. So I'm sure that we could, um, I don't wanna uh, promise anything, but I bet we could do some of those kinds of engagement events or there's lots of partners here I know that also work with those groups. Thank you, Buckley. And, you know, I, I do see Brendan's hand up. To, I mean, I guess I wanted to give you the opportunity to, if, if you, unless you want to share it through email, you can also uh, provide recommendations here, but um, you can also send them to us via email. Uh, Derek, I see your hand up. Yes, yes thank you, Carlos. Uh, Derek Grasty, Black Leadership Kitchen Cabinet. Um, what, what was the, the maximum ca capacity for the live experience group? 10 members. 10, 10, that's what I thought, 10, 10 members. Is that a hard 10 or is there a flexibility? It's a hard 10. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Christine, I, I see your hand up as well. So <clears throat> to go back one step, hey Buckley, good to see you on the, on the meeting. Um, to add to Buckley's list, I would also recommend that we look <clears throat> at Hand in Hand, the Domestic Employers Network. These folks work very hard as personal care attendants, and um, they really do need to be added to this to this group. Uh, many of them are <clears throat> Latinx, uh, uh, Filipino, Black, Asian. <laughs> Everybody in under the sun. Really good folk, very hardworking. And I would also like to say that <clears throat> we would um, we would definitely be um, interested and willing to host a meeting and to uh, to put out <clears throat> additional um, names to be added. And I'm a little concerned that, that the, the core group is going to be dead. Are you going to offer um, 
the core group to have um, a lot of it may not support, but um, added members to other community that I can, you know, um, add to the <laughs> add to the conversation. Yeah, thank you so much, Christine. So um, obviously we want each of the committees, um, obviously as you do your work, we really encourage you to invite um, many members of our community, uh, including those with lived experience in a variety of ways. So uh, by, by all means, committees should be feeling free to invite those individuals to your community meetings. You can schedule your own types of engagement or outreach activities with them. So there's no limitation on that end. It's just that for this specific group, for the lived experience group and the 10 individuals, um, they have um, a specific task at hand and, and um, items that we want them to specifically carry out. Uh, Yvonne, I, I see your hand up, or and also Derek. I don't know if you still have another question. Oh, but cool. oh sorry, sorry about that. Go ahead, Yvonne. Thank you. I um, I just wanted to say that I'm appreciative that you have a, a high school district there. I, it would be very helpful if we could have a middle school um, age group. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, I'll go ahead with Kiana and Victor. I, I do see you here. I, um, I think we are waiting after this discussion. We'll go straight into public comment. So I think if, if that might be an opportunity for you to, to, to provide some input, I believe. Um, just so thank you. Uh, Kiana, go ahead. Hi, Kiana Simmons with the Bill Wilson Center. I just wanted to say that we were reached up for this lived experience um, group as well. I just wanted to say that I don't see our name on here, but I do hope to have some um, former foster youth and uh, homeless youth on this, or at least put them in the, the hat. Thank you, Kiana. I apologize for the omission. Uh, Quincy, uh, I see your hand up. Yeah, so hard to get in front of you, Vic, man. Good to see you so most. See, say, boy, they, um, really quickly, Lighthouse, Building Back Better, we want to acknowledge that we would love to hold something in the future as well. So thank you. Thank you, Quincy. Uh, Luis, we'll, we'll go with you. Uh, thanks, Luis, from Working Partnerships. And just going back to the overall community engagement framework, uh, I think we're really interested in the community survey and the ask the chance to have some input and feedback into what are the questions uh, and maybe also input into the, the survey methodology to make sure that our communities are reached. Thank you, Luis. And uh, yeah, and just to reiterate that, you know, I think there's there was a prompt uh, in each of the committees to, to help answer what community input uh, you would want from uh, for uh, to hear from residents. And so that's a key question that we'd like to be able the community engagement committee would be interested in to 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 help formulate those questions. But we can definitely uh, uh, include the uh, see about how, the, how how we can have the other committees provide input on the survey methodology and questions. Okay. Looking for additional questions, comments from task force members. Okay, I do see Araceli. Uh, so, um, Araceli, uh, un, un momento. Uh, if we can have one of the one of the uh, Spanish language interpreters moved into the main room, and uh, and so, and then if the interpreter can wait until Araceli shares her comment for for her to and for the interpretation to follow. So a hacer un momento más quiero asegurar que está el eh, alguien aquí para hacer la interpretación. Okay. Yes, we can hear you and uh, we'll just uh, uh, Araceli si quieres hacer su comentario y después eh, eh, pueden seguir con la interpretación. Gracias. Um 
pues iba a comentar algo que no veo aquí y quizás sería buena idea también poner esta, um, la agencia de Bell Illusion, ya que ella también es, um, está trabajando con personas de la comunidad que necesitan ingresos o estuve trabajando un tiempito con ellos, estuvieron um, informando a las personas de cómo crear su propia cooperativa para poder crear sus propios ingresos. Um, creo que ellos también han escuchado y conocen muchas personas que, que tienen muchas experiencias de las que han, estamos hablando, que han sido um, desplazados de sus hogares y también podrían tener uh, sugerencias sol sobre soluciones que quizá ellos están implementando o que pues, se puede incorporar a nuestro trabajo. Y otra pregunta. Un momento, ahora Sally, antes del comento, uh, mejor uh, dejamos la interpretación. So, go ahead, Armando. Oh, Vincent, sorry. ¿Listo? Ah. Veggie Lucian. Sigue ahora con, con su segundo comentario. Gracias. Uh, quería preguntar sobre las encuestas que, que se harían a la comunidad. Sé que están hablando un poquito de de que vamos a tener la oportunidad de enviar más o menos qué queremos saber de la comunidad, pero tendremos la oportunidad de mirar antes de que salgan a la comunidad, ver el lenguaje que va a estar escrito en las encuestas, solo porque pensando en la comunidad y que soy persona de la comunidad y muchas no tenemos tanta, tanto estudio, cómo asegurar que son palabras sencillas para la comunidad de atender, que sea un lenguaje inclusivo donde estamos asegurando que todos vayamos a entender a las, la encuesta. Thank you for that, Araceli. Uh, I think that's a great comment. And uh, uh, oh, Ara, Vincent, let's go ahead and move you back to the to, to the Spanish channel. Um, that that's a great suggestion. And I believe we're right now. The coordination was to work with the community engagement committee to finalize the survey. But um, perhaps through the steering committee, we can we can. Uh, we can make sure that that uh, as many task force members have an opportunity to provide input on on the sur on before we finalize the questions on the survey. Thank you. 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 And Carlos, before we move on to public comment, maybe if you could just summarize again, next steps, if we could maybe just go back to, to that slide so everybody's aware where we're headed. Yes, um, so let's see here. So yeah, we're, we are, uh, by April 21st, we, will, we, we hope to get uh, all submissions uh, from interested candidates uh, for this lived experience form so we can, Um, finalize that list and have it adopted by the steering committee at their next meeting on April 27th. Um, at, we will be finalizing the, the community engagement plan um, at the, and 
before May before the May 12th task force meeting, we expect that you'll be receiving a final draft of it. Um, so we can review it and, and, and approve it at the May 12th task force meeting. And uh, we do expect to have uh, these community engagement activities launch in June. Um, and in June, and so, as, along with the activities that the that the lived experience group will be hosting. Great, thank you so much. So I, it's a lot of work, <laughs> right? And we want to really just thank the community engagement committee for just hitting the ground running, um, and getting really organized and proposing. Um, their plan for what I know we all believe is probably the most important part of the task force work is reaching um, our, our residents and hearing from them, um, hearing their experiences and understanding, um, you know, what services and resources they still need from us. So this is a big part um, of the task force work and just really appreciate um, all of the, the hard effort um, going into it. And um, we're going to have a lot of fun later this spring and into the summer. So with that, Carlos, I think, um, are we going straight into now public comment? Yes. Yes. Um, so um, I, members of the public, if you do have a comment, uh, please raise your hand and we will be giving you two minutes time to uh, make a comment. So uh, saludos, Victor, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you. Good evening. Um, thank you for doing this important work of creating a process for a, for a better recovery that's just for so many different communities. I'm pleased to see how there's such great representation in, in that previous slide, racial diversity, but also services and, and sectors. Um, and, you know, there was a comment around, you know, looking at uh, middle schools. And when the pandemic started, um, one of the areas that was really hard hit and, and disrupted, I think, was, was our schools, um, especially our elementary school students and their families who we're trying to readjust to COVID, a life of COVID, right? Of, of, of a worldview and, and a lifestyle of that. And we started to serve food resources at, at the Island Rock schools to get the word out. Um, and we saw how people needed food, health, information, funding, someone to connect with. And, and I think the schools, like the school districts and the families of Island Rock were really hard hit by this pandemic. And in addition, their educational institutions. So humbly would request or, or suggest that, you know, a school district like Alam Rock should be part of these conversations because they serve, um, I think children and some of the most vulnerable populations in East San Jose. And oftentimes these are like the larger institutions that could be very, a great a partner in terms of the outreach and engagement but also should benefit in this process as well because those are like the families and children that, that are part of that most hit area. So I would just highly encourage to involve that population and to think about, all of us to think about ways to engage our seniors as well um, because they're also often left out or, or uh, in this process. And it's been very difficult for a lot of folks. And lastly, you know, these districts have faced life and death situations with their families. So thank you. Gracias, Victor. Uh, Lan, Lan Jensen, go ahead. Hello. Thank you, uh, Carlos and uh, team. I echo what uh, Vic, Victor said earlier. This is great work. Um, congrats to all on what has been accomplished so far. My point, uh, today is about the lived experience for a full, fuller experience with even long lasting, long lasting and innovative solutions in mind. Um, one thing I am a little bit um, concerned with is that 
a typical small business, if um, they are worried about day-to-day -day living means, they may not be able to think about innovative ways that they can pivot and utilize to survive into the longer term. Specifically, one example is the digital equity. Um, so I just wanted to bring it forward so that all the leaders here uh, can be mindful of that and uh, ensure that the lived experience representatives do have some experience or some way of um, uh, thinking that can lead them into bring that into the fold. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Right, we so some more time for public comment. Uh, if there are any other individuals of the community who would like to make a comment, raise your hand. Otherwise, I think we are good with public comment, Rosalind. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. So I wasn't sure if we had a next step slide or not. I think that we do. At least a reminder um, of the next task force meeting is on Thursday, May 12th. May 12th. <laughs> that date right is Thursday, May 12th. So looking forward to seeing all of you then. We know that many committees uh, are going to be meeting before then. In fact, this evening, I know that three different committees are going to be meeting right after uh, this task force meeting. Um, so looking forward to continue to working with all of you. Um, you hear on the slide, obviously, you know how to reach us, our email website to get information and then the recovery team members listed here. So with that, um, Carlos, Aurelia, Rob, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Great. You're good. Well, awesome. Thank you so much again, everyone for joining us this evening. And uh, I, I think we will see some of you um, in just shortly in for some of the committee uh, meetings. And if not, then we will definitely see you on May 12th. Thanks again for your for participating. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.